Yeah, we're here at the SNS Museum in Viola, Wisconsin, and we're going to be doing a video tour of some of the uh, artifacts that we've collected over the last 50 plus years, and I think you're going to find it interesting. This picture behind me is a picture of George Smith Sr. and his wife Marjorie and one of their, their children, and you'll notice this motorcycle that I'm standing in front of here is a, a replica of this motorcycle that he raced in the 1940s and 1950s. And you notice he's got this huge trophy and all these other trophies. These are trophies that he won drag racing in the Chicagoland area. They lived in Blue Island, Illinois, and then this is their house. And uh, these are all the trophies, and we'll actually be seeing these trophies in the museum as, as we proceed in here. There's one interesting story I want to tell you here. If you notice this window here in this house, one of the first pieces of equipment that the Smiths bought in, in SNS Cycle was a lathe so they could create flywheels. And flywheels are an integral part of the stroker kits that SNS is so famous for. Anyway, their workshop was in the basement of this house, and they bought this lathe, and they didn't have any other way to get it into the basement except to take it apart and feed it piece by piece down this win window into the basement and reassemble it in, in their shop. So we're talking about some real dedicated people here. Aerial photographs of the SNS facility in Viola. Uh, this one here was taken, I would think, somewhere around 1970 or 69 when uh, George and Marge moved their business from Blue Island, Illinois, up here. And you can see all there is is the house. And over here off this, this picture, there's actually a little milk house, which is still down here. This one here was probably taken in the early to mid-90s. Whoops, I don't want to knock this off here. Anyway, you can still see that the, the buildings are separate and there's going to be a big warehouse out here. These pictures here were both taken fairly recently. Um, this one was probably taken in the late 90s. Um, the big warehouse has been built onto the back here, but we're still missing the, the building that we're standing in right now, which is right here. We look at this picture. This was taken um, probably about 2000, 2001. You see the, this, this big building here, the three-story building that contains the sales department, engineering, and in the basement we have this museum that we're in right here. When this building was built, uh, the board of directors mandated that we have a museum because in the course of you know being in the high-performance business for 50-some-odd years, we've actually accumulated a lot of artifacts, and some of these things are priceless. Uh, they're, they're a part of motorcycling history. They're a part of SMS's history and they were stored in warehouses and in barns and in people's houses. And this, this facility here brought them all together so that people can come here and enjoy them and actually see the story of SNS Cycle. This red pan bobber was George Sr.'s uh, personal motorcycle. Um, stories vary about how, what the size of this motor is. I believe uh, the current story is that it was an, it's an 84 inch motor. Some people say it's a 96 a five inch stroke as opposed to four and a half. But what's interesting about this bike is that it has dual carb heads. And that's one of the things that George did in the early days. Uh, he was building some pretty big motors and he wanted them to be really fast. So the problem of getting more air into these motors, uh, he actually reworked these heads and put two Riley carburetors on it. And that's what he was using on um, the Tramp, which was the, the bike in the picture that we, we saw a little earlier and that's the one he was whooping up on everybody in the drag strip because he was the fastest guy in the Chicagoland area. And this was his personal ride. And it's, it's pretty involved how this was done. They actually were doing this on an exchange basis early on in the 1960s, but they only did about 50 sets because it was really labor intensive and very expensive. Later on in the mid 60s, he developed the, the SNS carburetors, uh, which is another thing that SNS site was very well known for. This display case, we've got a, a set of these uh, dual carb heads that SNS produced in the early 60s. We found these for sale, uh, somebody brought them to our attention and we snapped them up right away because that's a part of SNS history. There's only about 50 sets of these things that were produced, so it was really a find to find two of them intact with uh, two linker carburetors attached to them. At the top of this display case, I mentioned that this is that big trophy that is in the picture that we, we saw initially, and these are some of the other trophies that were there, along with some of the, the more recent NHRA trophies that we've accumulated in our NHRA drag racing program.
the lathe that I was talking about earlier that was disassembled and fed down into the basement through the window. But as I said, this was something that they really needed in order to produce flywheels. And that was the easiest way to make a motor bigger was to put some longer stroke flywheels in it and make a stock four stroker with it. Still a very effective, very economical way to go. 1966 FLH uh, reputedly was Marge Smith's personal bike. Uh, this was a, a test bed for SNS products. Uh, 84 inch stroker kit is what it has in it right now for an engine. And right now it actually has a Super E carburetor on it, but this was the bike that they tested their SNS carburetors, the, the early style and the late style, and eventually the Super B. This is a, a, a motor that was built in the development period um, in the early 90s when George Smith was contemplating trying to break the 200 mile an hour barrier with a Harley drag bike. Uh, this was a, an alcohol powered turbo engine uh, this didn't work out too well because uh, the gigantic exhaust pulses coming out of these two big cylinders just wreaked havoc with this turbo and broke it repeatedly. When they finally ended up doing this bike, it was actually a supercharger and not a turbo, which is driven right off the end. The first uh, V-twin drag bike to go 200 miles an hour and a quarter mile. And uh, George Smith Jr. actually retired from SNS Cycle in the early 90s and went out racing. He formed Team Hubba Hubba Racing, and that's the team that uh, ran this bike. And it was the first bike to go 200 miles an hour and a quarter. Um, this is a supercharged nitro fuel injected motor. And back then, the technology in motorcycles wasn't that uh, sophisticated as it is now. It was kind of difficult to get this thing tuned, but they managed to do it, and they ended up going 200 mile, over 200 miles an hour in 1995 and of course now that's fairly commonplace but up to that it just didn't seem like a Harley drag bike could go that fast. What I have in my hand here is one of the original patterns uh, used by the foundry to produce castings for the Super B carburetors. This is made out of mahogany, very nice wood, uh, but this was uh, this is fairly uh, unsophisticated technology compared to what we use today. What I have my, in my hand here is a, a wax prototype uh, object that was created uh, in our proto rapid prototyping machine uh, using a 3D computer uh, generated model. This is actually made out of wax. They also uh, can make in, um, objects out of plastic and actually they can use a metal powder. But these wax ones can be used to make castings. Uh, they take them to a, an investment casting house they use this as the form, uh, coat it with ceramic, melt the wax out, and pour metal into the, the void that's left. And a lot of times we make prototype parts in that way. Well, I should be showing you one in just a second. Motorcycle here is another example of the SNS racing heritage. Um, George Smith made his first, George Smith Sr., that is, made his first pilgrimage to Bonneville in 1953, where he set a record with that tramp bike that we were talking about. Uh, and Bonneville has been a big part of SNS for a long time. For one thing, we test our parts there on occasion. They call the, the salt flats the great white dyno, because if you can't break it there, you probably can't break it anywhere. This motorcycle here is a, an Ironhead Sportster, and it has a five inch stroke and a three and a half inch bore, which ends up being a 96 inch motor. It ran on nitromethane. And the guy that piloted this bike was named Warren O'Reilly, and he did a lot of racing for SNS during the, the early 1970s. This engine was called the Funny Motor. It's kind of interesting because this is a, a shovel head motor, and it has two carburetors. So what it has is two front heads, so that the carburetor can come in at the right angle. It's kind of like an XR1000, but it's much much bigger. Uh, this ran on gasoline and alcohol and nitro in different classes. And you notice it's a generator motor. And the reason they use generator crankcases in these engines is because they're narrower. They present less wind resistance. And that's a big, big factor in Bonneville, is wind resistance. This is actually a motorcycle. It looks like a fish or a torpedo or something, but it is a two-wheel two vehicle. Uh, this was a project that SNS embarked with uh, in the 1980s or the mid-80s with Bub Enterprises. And I'm not sure if anybody knows what the uh, term bub actually stands for. 
it's an acronym, but since this is a family show, I can't tell you what it really means. Sorry. Anyway, this, this motorcycle here uh, was piloted by Dan Kinsey, and it set a world speed record of 276 miles per hour. And Dan Kinsey actually crashed this motorcycle at over 200 miles an hour. Um, got up and walked away. Uh, they put a new skin on it, and he got back in it and drove it again. Now that takes some guts, I will tell you what. Um, and we have an audio recording of that event, and he didn't even say anything that maybe you wouldn't want your mom to hear. The motorcycle here is the first bike to have the SNS billet 160 cubic inch. 60 degree pro stock engine. This one is affectionately known as Rattle Trap. It was the original bike that was built by G Squared Racing, which was another company that George Smith was involved in. And this is this is the one that uh, the entire world kind of was put on notice that you know SNS is a force to be reckoned with in racing. In the late 1970s, George Smith Sr. was uh, he had an idea that he wanted to build a V4 engine and he actually got to this point. These are some cylinder castings and uh, engine block castings. He was that far along and was, was going to make a proprietary SNS engine. And this was in the late 1970s. Unfortunately, he was stricken with a fatal heart attack in 1980 and never actually finished this project. However, in, in the, the mid-2000s, uh, 2007 actually, we did finally uh, introduce a proprietary SNS engine, which is the x switch In 2003, SNS embarked on a, a major promotional campaign. We call it the 145 Tribute Project. And the whole idea of the, the project was to pay tribute to Harley Davidson's 100th anniversary and SNS's 45th anniversary, because SNS was started in 1958. So we said, well, 145, let's build a 145 cubic inch engine to commemorate this. So we did, and to take it a few steps further, we contacted some of the world's best custom bike builders to build bikes, and they were going to build 45 of them, and they were serial numbered 1958 up to 2003. And what you see here, this bunch of motorcycles, are the first set of bikes from those builders. And SNS bought the first set for the museum so that we would always have them and people could remember this. And we've, we've gone over some of the high points here in the museum. Uh, we could spend a week, you know, talking about all the different little things that are in here. Uh, if you're interested in seeing what's actually in the SNS museum, what I would ask you to do is give us a call and organize a tour. You know, you can set up a tour and we'll actually show you through the museum, show you through the plant. Uh, the museum isn't open all day, every day, but we'll definitely, if you have a group that wants to come through and take a look at it, give us a call, we'll check it out.